I'm Tracy Lund. I'm the Water Resources Advisor for the Town of Prescott Valley. And I'm Matt Sandberg, the Supervisor of the Wastewater Treatment Plant here in Prescott Valley. And Matt is going to give us a really exciting tour of what happens here, here with your wastewater here in Prescott Valley. So excited. Let's go. Here we are at what we call the headworks of the wastewater treatment plant. This is where all of the toilets, sinks, drains in the Prescott Valley area end up so we can get all of that water and start treating it. We also have lift stations around the town, uh, say for the Viewpoint area, Pronghorn area, Stone Ridge and Quailwood, and then a few more that are downhill from our gravity fed system that pump up to the gravity fed and come down here. This is where we have our three screens where we take out any of the heavy material that's coming in through the toilet sinks and drains. Uh, we call them rags. Uh, these rags are, consist of paper towels, wipes, um, fem feminine products. Things that aren't flushable. Things that aren't flushable, yes, yeah. There, there's no toilet paper right here. So um, the real, real pricey part of our, our process is to get all that heavy stuff out of the water before we send it through the rest of our process. What do you have here? Here is water from the headworks that comes straight from our stomachs that goes through the toilets, drains, and uh, into our septic or sewer system here at the plant. This is our first stage of it. This here has a total suspended solid count of about uh, 300, 400 milligrams per liter. And I can't wait to show everybody what our final product is. And notice here that it's, it's quite, uh... Uh, there's a lot of cloudiness to it. We'll get to see how this changes over, Absolutely. over time here. Absolutely, yes, magic. Now we're to the second part of our process. First, we got rid of all of the rags down there okay. at the screenings. Then all the water comes up to a splitter box and goes between these two aeration basins. So we are considered a extended aeration wastewater treatment process. So this is where all of the bugs from our stomachs and start eating away at the impurities of the wastewater. So we have oxygen that they feed off of. There's food in here also that they feed off of. The food still comes from our bellies. Mm -hmm. And then we put them through a process of aeration and then into an anox state. So they're, they're taking care of our nitrates and ammonias also the, during this time. And this is also what starts our settling process, which is the magic part of the Prescott Valley Wastewater Treatment Plant. Here's our second stage. We've got our bugs that we're controlling population on, giving them air, giving them food. And now you can see already that these uh, separation, the settling process yeah. is starting to happen. So you can literally see our settling process happening. We've got clean water on top and all of the sludge, we call it, the bugs and the food have gathered together and gained more weight than the water and is settling out. And we've got a nice supernate, they call it, clean effluent water on top. Here we are, the third step to our water treatment process here in Prescott Valley. This is a circular clarifier. We have three of them online. This one is our third, number three clarifier, which was put in uh, after the original two and it's larger than the other two. Here in this clarifier, what is happening is the settling process, just like we're showing, but in a huge form. So water from the aeration basins with the bugs, the food, are gathered together and they are falling to the bottom in this center column of it. We've, there's an arm that goes around the circular clarifier that is scraping the bottom of the sludge that's settling, which is also sloped to the center column, which is where we can grab and use the bugs as we need them. So we have a return process of this sludge back to aeration to continuously work together to make this yeah, okay. supernate cleaner. And that is uh, settling in a jar. This is settling in a clarifier at an industrial level and gives us the, the chance to collect and waste. We also have to get rid of these bugs. Um, they multiply, especially during the summer, a lot more. But this gives us the, the chance to gather them and do what we need to with them. And then in the meantime, of course, then you have a consistent population of microbes to do the work for you. Absolutely. With the food coming in and the uh, 
the source of water. Um, you do, you maintain a level of uh, microbiology that keeps this clear. All right, now it's time to take a shot under the microscope to take a look at the ones doing all the work here at the plant. We've got microbiology that comes from our stomachs that we aerate, we saw aeration, we saw the clarification, and then we take those bugs and put them back through so we can take care of millions of gallons of water a day. And uh, we keep track of them on a microscope and check them at least once a week to make sure they're the kind that we want and to make sure that our SRT, the, uh, the amount of time that they sit in our system is correct. And what we're hoping to see are rotifers, ciliates, stock ciliates. Those are the best bugs to have in the process. They're the most active, they're the most hungry, and they're the ones that we keep track of and try to keep in there. As soon as they get old, we start seeing older kind of bugs, Nicardia, and some other sorts that actually give us a negative um, to our process. So we are always uh, keeping track of and looking for the ones that are doing the work correctly. So let's take a look. There we go. That one move and you can see that's a uh, free swimming ciliate working. Then we got these little guys that we'll go ahead and zoom up on. Let's see what kind of work they're doing. So those are stock ciliates that are sucking food into them with their uh, propellers. And those are the best kind of bugs you can have in an aeration process like this. Let's see what else we can find. Uh, there's a rotifer hiding right in the middle there. He's also got propellers. Doesn't have to move around too much. He pulls the food to him or it. And everything else you're seeing there is pretty much food and maybe a little bit of filamentous bacteria. There's another free swimmer eating as he runs around. There we go, and there's a rotifer at 40 times magnification. Anchored, anchored into some food, moving around, eating to its, its heart's desire. with all the bugs that we waste from our system on a daily. This is the first part of our process. None of this other treatment process takes any chemicals. But here with the, the sludge that we have wasted, we do add a polymer. So there's coagulation with, with the bugs that we're wasting and it creates what we call a cake. The cake rolls out on these tables. We call these our belt presses. So as it goes around, there's two sets of belts, then two belts come together and press the cake and get the water out of it. All the water falls to the bottom and gets sent back down to Headworks. So the water, obviously, you want to pull out of the cake because where is the cake going? So the cake goes to the landfill. We collect it in two trailers here on a conveyor system. 
Uh, we need to get all the water out of it so it can transport more than anything. And also because we don't want to pay for all the weight. So we're getting rid of the weight and the water and sending just the wasted biomaterial to Gray Wolf uh, Landfill. Now we're almost to the end of our treatment process. Here is where the water goes through filters. We've got two sets of disc filters, which is a carpet that the treated water goes up against when it catches all the particulates. And then we vacuum that carpet out, send the water back to Headworks, but the clean water that comes through goes then to our UV disinfection process. Isn't that beautiful? It's great. So we have now gone from, from the headworks being at a TSS, total suspended solids of around 300 to a whole different unit of NTU, which is a turbidity unit to a 0.5 in turbidity. So super clear. Super, super clear. Doesn't it look refreshing? Here we are, our last step in our water treatment process, our UV disinfection room. Uh, our water that we treat in the plant comes through and is treated with ultraviolet light to kill off any more uh, biological uh, material in the water. Um, right now our water is crystal clear. We're at a 0.5 in turbidity. Um, hopefully everybody gets a chance to see that here today, how uh, clear our water is. The water that we make here is used for Stone Ridge Golf Course up at our Mountain Valley Lakes and in our North Plains Recharge area to recharge the aquifers for Prescott Valley. Okay, so this is our UV room. This is where our treated water comes through to be disinfected. There's a few different forms of disinfection, but here at Prescott Valley, we use the uh, ultraviolet light to kill off bacteria. So we have an A-plus treated effluent water that goes out to our uh, North Plains recharge up to the uh, Mountain Valley Parks uh, and that finishes up at Stone Ridge Golf Course. Um, so this is the last step then in the process? This is the last step in the process before it hits and moves to other places, yes. Excellent. Yeah. And right now, if we take a look at the water, we're at a 0.5 in turbidity. But, uh, it's crystal clear, so hopefully everybody can get a, get a look at that today too. And here, the electricity is captured and used throughout our treatment process. And that is it for our Prescott Valley Wastewater Advanced Treatment Facility. That's our process from dirty to clean. Thank you very much, Matt. It's been great.